Paul played with me for a good, what, 15 years? Yeah. In Ambrosia. Indeed. Played keyboard, uh, keyboard amazing harmonica and lead vocals and vocals. And, I mean, you really raised that band up when you were with it. So mm -hmm. oh, gotta, uh, I've been bragging about you for years. <laughs> so, um, Bud, you've moved. I you did, you, uh, you up and left. Why? <laughs> wow. No, I mean, what prompted you? What prompted you? Because you're in Europe. No, I mean, why would you no, leave Los Angeles? No, I think why it's okay. Yeah. Los Angeles. I think it's okay. Not, not Ambrosia. No, I, I understand like, why you left Ambrosia. Oh. <laughs> no, no. No, I, we what can made leave, you? Uh, we, what we, made you move to Holland? Yeah, it's uh, it's a long story, but it's one of those very typical uh, stories. I was over there playing with a band called Venice. <laughs> Wake up, Alan. Venice. Venice. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the the band Venice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great, uh, great singers and uh, uh, yeah, it's yeah. a great band from from LA. And I was over there playing and uh, and I was playing at a, a a venue up in the north of Holland and I and I met a young lass. Oh my gosh. <coughs> and uh, and uh, our eyes locked. And uh, then there was the. And anything else locked? Uh, Hello. Uh, her door. You might try to follow her. And Chastity Belt. No. So you met somebody and that prompted you? But you must have had other motivations. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it was definitely the culmination of, of years of, of a dream. I always had a dream to live in Europe. And, and I was, for me, I had reached the point where I, I wanted to do something different than, than live in Los Angeles. Even though I, I, you know, I have a lot of great feelings about Los Angeles and great friends and like yeah. you and but but it was yeah it was time to do something different and that just felt really like all the the science from the universe are saying go to Europe and move move to Holland so yeah. and, and uh, has it how, how do you feel about it because how many years has it been it's uh, been uh, three and a half yeah just over three and a half years wow. that's yeah. a great thing yeah, to do. I, I think it's a great thing to yeah. do yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I've, so I've <laughs> fantasized about doing it you know sure I mean from my standpoint I think that I, I would I would recommend that anybody everybody should try it at least yeah. to go because now when I now that I've done it I feel like I could have done it a lot a lot a long time ago actually and just yeah just go and try it I mean the, the very worst thing that happens I always my, my advice to people who ask me about, yeah, should I try that? Is that that you have an amazing experience and, and you, you come, come back, back yeah. you come back home and pick up where you left off, and then that's the worst thing that happens. And then the best thing is that some things inevitably will show up that you never could have, uh, you know, anticipated. Yeah. And then, yeah. I, think so, now, I mean, so now your career uh, really is like, you know, bicontinental, whatever. Yeah, it's become it's become more international because I now I have a band in Italy and I play down there quite often, and then working in Holland and also in Norway, uh, where my grandfather was born. So I have a... Uh, and you play a festival every year? Yeah, in my grandfather's hometown. And so, yeah. and I've developed a little bit of a thing up there as well. And yeah, so slowly, slowly but surely, I'm, I'm building something over there. And then it's great that I can come back here and still do things. And yeah, yeah it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty nice. And, and you, just, <clears throat> you just came back to play with Don Grusin, right? Yeah. Don Grusin invited me to come play this this really nice uh, gig with him and Abel Boreal and Jimmy Branley and a great trumpet player from uh, Germany. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I came back to do that as well to work as work on my new CD, right. which I'm coming close to finishing. And it uh, sounds great. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Thanks. Yeah, Mary Mary sang on it. Burley's played on it. Of course, Alan's on a, on a few songs. And uh, so and you actually so have a band intact here. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean Alan's here. And yeah, indeed. So well, yeah, I mean, great I have, players at your beck and call here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I, I feel incredibly fortunate to have the level of people that 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 have played on the record with me and have, that have played in my band in the past. Like Alan, I just, I mean, Alan to me is up there with just about anyone you can name. I mean, I just think he's at that level. So it's, it's a bad time to I'm quitting. <laughs> Would you say Alan? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a bad time to tell him I'm quitting. <laughs> yeah, where is? No, okay. Is is Alan in the guitar god status? <laughs> he is. Um, he is. In my mind. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, so uh, your first album. Yes. Walk this earth. Walk the earth. Walk the earth. Yeah. Right. And uh, and so, where can people get that? Where can people go? You to can you can get it at uh, CD Baby online. Right, CD, that, CD Baby dot com. Right. Yeah. And so, the new one is going to be called Across the Rubicon. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? It's a. Uh, are, are you being silly? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm sorry. You, you know, you know, you know what the <coughs> crossing the Rubicon. Rubicon, the cube thing. 
It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Rubik's Cube uh, reference because uh, I, my audience, I think, are <coughs> people that are very challenged about. No, I'm sorry. Continue. No, it's it's a it's a reference to uh, a historical reference to uh, when Caesar Julius Caesar <coughs> uh, crossed the Rubicon. Uh, at that time, uh, it, he wasn't emperor yet, and the emperor had the rule was that you couldn't cross the Rubicon back into the emperor into the uh, empire without the permission of the emperor. Mm -hmm. And Julius Caesar said, "Well, I'm Julius Caesar, so I'm." crossing the Rubicon, and he did, and he said, that's when he said the die is cast, which is where that saying came from. So I always, I, that just, that phrase came to my mind, across the Rubicon, which is part to do with my moving to Europe, and that I feel mm -hmm. like I, yeah, did I, I crossed this very huge Rubicon, the Atlantic <coughs> Ocean, and, uh, and yeah, there was like, there's no, that was his, his line was that there's no turning back, that once you do it, and then, so, mm -hmm. anyway. Cool. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> See, Rubicon to me means that it was the name of the publishing company that our first manager had when he worked the Ambrosia <laughs> off for all the money. <laughs> all right. I, so that's I, we're, we're coming really close <laughs> to going into a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> it's like but now you're from Seattle originally? I was, right? yeah. I grew up in Seattle. I was born in Alaska, but I grew up in Seattle. <clears throat> so harmonica, keyboards, vocals, where did, where did it start? Guitar. I mean, how did it start? Does he? Guitar. Does he play guitar, yeah, Tolik? Yeah. In yeah, we're well, not around Alan. I don't play. <laughs> Actually, you played in Ambrosia for a second. You played a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. several songs. Oh, I know. I didn't see it. I started with the harmonica because my brother it was a it was a really fine blues guitarist, and he played some harmonica, and and they just happened to be around the house, luckily for me, and I just started playing blues harmonica, and a little late, little bit later, I got into the chromatic harmonica. Do you see? Are you known for the chromatic? More than the blues, or even yeah, no, absolutely. Because every no. guy gets pigeonholed for <clears throat> no, absolutely, much more well known for chromatic because that's that's it's a more uh, specialized instrument, and I fell into this niche. Um, Not many cats play it. Yeah, there's there's actually well, yeah. Well. I mean, the thing is, is that I play it in a style that's that's very influenced by Stevie Wonder, and that's seems to be this niche that. I, I mean, there's a couple of people I've heard that do it somewhat, but I, for whatever reason, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of people doing it. Mm -hmm. And when I was living in L.A. especially, I fell into this position of kind of like, well, when Stevie wasn't available, I was able to step into a few... You discount really, Stevie. Yeah. <laughs> discount yeah. Stevie. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait to find a niche. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's a little cramped and, and itchy, but yeah, it's nice. Talek has another niche, though. Oh? He cooks a mean Italian dinner. He does? <laughs> Oh man! You oh, yeah, tasted yeah, it. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, yeah. Well, I'd be, I'm spending a lot of time in Italy, and oh, I and man. I st and I watch very carefully when my friends down there cook. Ah, delicious! And I steal their ideas, yeah. and then I do it poorly over here. So oh. people over here don't know. Well, you got meatballs. <laughs> you definitely looks, have meatballs then. If I do it for my well, I, and I have done it for my. I had the audacity to cook some Italian food for him. For Italians? When he came up, one of my friends came up to uh, Holland. And what did he say? And he was he was very generous. He was gracious. He was gracious, yeah. Aww. He just went, he was not bad. And I could tell it was just going, like, holy crap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I should kick his ass. But no, he was. He didn't have enough wine yet. <laughs>